Hello and welcome everyone to another market commentary from Stashaway. With me, of course, our Chief Investment Officer, Freddie Lim. Hey, Freddie, how are you? Hey, Philip, good to see you again. It's been two weeks. It has been two weeks. And on top of it being two weeks since the last one, Freddie, we also have a guest on the uh, show today. Um, do you want to introduce Stephanie for us? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm actually very excited to, to uh, let our users know that um, Stashaway has appointed a new group uh, deputy CIO, uh, Stephanie Leong, and she'll be joining and be uh, the CIO office. She, she will work very closely with myself on all matters in, in relating to investments. I'm very happy to, to, to introduce you to Stephanie because she has very exciting backgrounds in computer science, artificial intelligence from Stanford. And she also has many, many years, 17 years uh, to be exact, uh, of experience in financial markets, um, having managed multi-asset and multi-billion dollar portfolios and in, 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 in funds and in family offices. So she's superbly experienced. And uh, here we go. Um, uh, Stephanie, do you want to say hi to our users? Sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Stephanie. And um Super happy to be on the uh, the the market commentary together with Freddie uh, and and Philippe, and now we will be bringing uh, more investment uh, products as well as uh, better investment uh, uh, experience for all of you guys. So looking forward to that. Yeah, no, we're looking forward to having you here, Stephanie. And uh, just for the audience, uh, a heads up: uh, we're recording a podcast episode with Stephanie very soon. So if you have any questions you'd like to ask her. Um, send us uh, an email to podcast at stashaway.com or if you want, you can also put comments uh, below uh, wherever you're listening so that uh, our team can pick them up and myself can can ask all of them to, to Stephanie on that podcast episode soon. Uh, with that being said, it's been two weeks, Freddie. Um, lots of um, things happening around the world, but I think uh, we wanted to touch a little bit on the topic of inflation again by reading out one of the user questions that we've gotten um, uh, throughout the last two weeks. And one of them is from Kenny Lee. He says, as always, thanks for the insightful weekly commentaries. As I understand, Stashway is in an all-weather mode right now. Can you explain to us again what we expect in a high-inflation environment? Um, well, first of all, um, just want to remind users that we sort of been in this all-weather strategy since last May. And that was to prepare us for not just uncertainty, but um, big trends like um, massive money printing that governments and central banks have done uh, during the pandemic. Um, it has the same effect as either diluting the value of the paper money or actually having an inflationary effect that we have seen recently. I'll let Stephanie comment a bit about inflation and uh, certain asset classes that we already have. Um, sort of in the portfolios that will sort of help uh, protect uh, the portfolio's value against them. Yeah, so we actually wrote about this uh, during our latest uh, CIO Insight. Um, of course, the, the latest number was uh, for the U.S. was actually uh, over 4%, which is a, a, a recent high and exceeded a lot of expectations from economists, etc. But I guess it's important to think about like, what is driving this uh, U.S. inflation and then also we wanted to point out that this is a very, very uh, specific U.S. Uh, uh, phenomenon that we're seeing, actually globally around the world. Uh, for example, in, in Asia, uh, inflation rates are not as high as in the U.S. So there's several reasons why we're seeing such a high inflation rate. Um, mostly, uh, there is a low base effect, i.e. if you look at what happened in uh, COVID, of course, prices fell uh, quite aggressively last year. So we're starting, if you compare it year on year, um, uh, growth rate, I mean, that is, uh, that would be quite high given the very low base last year. Secondly, as we um, uh, are still facing some supply side issues, uh, particularly in commodities and upstream uh, resources, that actually drive uh, prices higher. So we expect this supply side issue to resolve itself uh, over the coming years. But this is something that is causing a uh, high inflation rate as well. And then lastly, of course, uh, for the U.S., is uh, economy is reopening. So, I mean, this actually drives uh, an a increase in demand, which, I mean, drives uh, prices higher as well. So I think it's important to remember that some of these um, factors are more transitory or transient, which we expect to, to ease over the coming years. 
So um, I guess if we think about the headline inflation rate uh, of over 4%, 4%, it's important to remember these uh, driving forces. And as Freddie said, uh, there are some assets that actually benefit from a higher inflation environment, which includes, for example, uh, gold. So in our portfolios, we have gold as a protective asset against uh, rising inflation. And in particularly, when you have inflation higher and interest rates staying constant, the real uh, rate, which is uh, uh, your nominal interest rate minus inflation rate, actually uh, goes lower. So gold actually historically uh, has a good relationship with this real rate. So when rates are low, I mean, gold performs uh, quite well as a protective asset. Other assets that are uh, would perform better um, uh, would be, for example, uh, natural resources, emerging market equity, which are exposed to uh, more natural resources, as well as, uh, for example, uh, REITs and inflation-linked uh, bonds. Yeah, no, thanks, Stephanie. Thanks, Freddie, for that comprehensive answer to Kenny's question on inflation. Very much appreciated. Um, moving on to the next topic, though, um, something that was obviously in the news a lot over the last two weeks is the um, global corporate tax deal that everyone thought was not going to maybe go ahead is now apparently going ahead, Freddie. Uh, maybe you want to chime on that a little bit? Well, if you um, step back a bit, it's really in the first place, companies are being creative in how they account for revenues. And the accounting laws is sort of like, it's sort of not based on where you sell your products, it's sort of based on where you're headquartered. So if you're headquartered in Boston in the US, you can still book revenues coming in from a zero tax haven, percent tax haven, such as Bermuda, uh, simply because of how you structure your accounting uh, reporting uh, workflows. So that's sort of a lot of lost revenues. So the global standard now is uh, first progress is uh, what Janet Yellen, the Treasury Secretary of the US, has done in the G7 is to have a, a court on at least imposing a minimum 15% minimum corporate tax on foreign income. So what it means is that if Bermuda is going to charge 0% income tax on the revenue book from there, the difference of 15 versus zero will be now earned by the home country. So at least some sort of taxes will be captured by uh, the, the, the where you're headquartered rather than uh, know where you actually sold your goods, right? So it's uh, they're just trying to sort of uh, widen the net to make sure um, it's harder to now uh, to, to to hide your flows. Um, so companies, especially tech companies, because of online services, data services, digital services are a little bit more borderless. They now would sort of uh, be in a crosshair of uh, such tax treatments. Um, in the end, our personal opinion is this is better than unilateral effort by France and Germany to slap a random 3% tax on revenues made in their country, right? Because if every, it's sort of a, um, it, you can sort of see it as very ad hoc and countries trying to up one against another, that can actually cascade over time to something very horrible. So to sort of have global standard is still a welcome one. Um, and yes, Amazon would be increasingly more captured, uh, although there's some profit margin requirement before they get taxed, but they are trying to capture companies like Amazon, Facebook in a more holistic manner. So it is slightly negative in the near term. Um, but look, um, it's, uh, it's something that's been going on for years. It's a trend that's inev and, and inevitable. And it's better to have a global standard than ad hoc standards. Great. Thanks, Freddie. Thanks, um... Stephanie again as well. For everyone else, if you want to learn a little bit more and you know about inflation and more on the investment side of things, things that we look out for for the rest of the year, you can join one of our upcoming webinars. It's actually across um, our regions, Singapore, uh, Malaysia, and Hong Kong. It's called Stashways Market Outlook 2021. It's Wednesday, June 16th. That's Singapore, Malaysia, Hong Kong time, 7 p.m. And for our audience in the Middle East, it's at 3 p.m. your time. The links um, to sign up for those is in the show notes below this video, as well as on our website uh, or anywhere else that you can find Stashway. So we hope to see you all there and you can ask more questions to the investment team there as well. And again, we look forward to being with you again over the next few weeks. Until then, have a wonderful rest of your week. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to get notified whenever we have new content out for you. 
Also, don't forget to download the Stash Away app. It's available in the Apple App Store as well as the Google Play Store. So you can start on your financial journey right now.